I've been wanting to put these sway bars on the Miata for ages now, but my coworkers had other ideas. <laughs> so it's finally my turn to pick a mod, and I wanted to make the car handle better. With one of the most often overlooked, easy to install, bang for your buck upgrades out there, I'm talking about sway bars. But am I just being a sway bar hype man, or do they make a big enough difference to really be worth their cost? Today we're gonna talk about sway bars while we install a set on the Miata to figure out for ourselves whether or not they're actually worth it. I'm Zach, this is Money Pit, let's sway baby. All right, so it's no secret that I wanna make this Miata handle as good as possible. And if you've been following along, you know that we've already done a set of coilovers on the car, which did huge things for the way this thing handles. But there's still a lot of body roll in the Miata and coilovers alone just can't do that much against body roll. So today we're gonna to combat body roll by installing a set of sway bars on the Miata. Now, before we just go installing a set all nimbly bimbly and saying that it feels better, we're gonna do some science. So we set up a little slalom course here in my neighborhood and I'm gonna go through it real quick with the stock sway bars on and we'll see just how much body roll we have currently. And then we'll install our new beefy chunky sway bars and we'll see how much body roll we have afterwards. And you know, I'm not really a betting man, but if I were, I would bet that we're gonna significantly reduce the body roll that this car has with the sway bars we installed today. Hello? off. All right, so before I can explain how sway bars work, what they're even doing in there, and why they're such a good upgrade, we got to take the stock bars out so you can really see what we're talking about. So I'm a huge proponent, obviously, of sway bars, but I can admit that it might not be the right way to spend your money uh, for every car, right? For the Miata, I think this is going to be a great upgrade. This is a small little roadster. It's a car built for handling. This is never going to be really fast in a straight line or anything like that. So handling upgrades, the Miata takes really well. But if this were an SUV or, you know, a big old muscle car, Maybe sway bars wouldn't be the thing. Maybe that wouldn't be the best bang for your buck. Maybe you'd do better with an exhaust or, or some subwoofers or something like that. But for the Miata, handling upgrades is what we're doing. So we can see our front sway bar in here. The first thing we're gonna need to do in terms of getting it out of the car is removing both end links. The end link is what connects the sway bar to the control arm, which is what makes the sway bar work. Without these, you're screwed. Uh, these can also get worn out and clunky, so if you hear a clunking when you're going over bumps, it might be your end links. Once you have the end links out, then you just need to get the bars out, which is as easy as removing the hardware from the sway bar brackets. That usually attaches somewhere to the chassis. In this case, we've got some sway bar mounts. The hardware is really easy to get to. Pull those off, and then the sway bar should come free. Easy as that. Okay, so we got the sway bars off. Now, let's talk about what a sway bar even actually is. It's basically a big spring, and what it does is connects your left and right suspension across an axle. So your left and right suspension on the front and your left and right suspension on the rear are connected by a sway bar. So your sway bar, most of the time when you're riding down the street, isn't doing much. If your wheels are doing basically the same thing, it doesn't really have much input over driving characteristics. But when you take a corner, the outside suspension of your car is gonna compress while the inside suspension is gonna stand up and the sway bar is connected to the left and the right control arm, which are doing opposite things. So then this big spring has opposing forces on either end, which twist that spring. So depending on how heavy duty this spring is, will determine how much it opposes that twist, which in turn keeps the car flat or lets body roll happen. So what are you looking for when you upgrade your sway bars? Well, in most cases, we're gonna be looking for a thicker sway bar. That means that it's a thicker spring, which means it'll resist those twisting forces more. Another thing that we're looking for is adjustability. On our new sway bars, we've got multiple holes at the ends where we can connect our end links. So now we'll be able to tune our balance, our handling characteristics, front and rear based on these holes. All right, I think you guys got the gist of sway bars. Now let's put these beautiful blue bars into that car and see how it feels. First, I'm gonna put some grease inside these bushings. You don't need too much of it. Just get it in there, give it a nice coating, and then back on. The front bar is identical if it's this way or this way, so the front bar is okay. The rear bar, there is an upside down. Ow! Oh my God. What'd you do? Hit the 
Got my knee, my shitty knee. Now all our hardware is started. Now we're just gonna tighten it up about halfway and then we can put our braces in place. So this is the brace, it's very simple. Uh, basically the ends of the, hard, uh, the sway bar hardware go into these two little holes and then it pushes up against the frame horn to try to solidify this mount a little bit. It's really simple, um, but it should do a good job. Okay, so unlike the front sway bar, which you can't really install wrong, this you can. So you see how this is angled? That means uh, there is a way to put this in upside down. And to be honest, I wasn't really paying that much attention when I took the stock one out, which is something you should try to do, pay attention. So I kind of just stuck an end link in to see how it wants to sit, and it clearly wants to meet up with the sway bar at that angle. Time to install the end links, and these are adjustable, so we're gonna have to pay attention to that. Currently, we have all of them adjusted to be approximately the same length as the stock end links. And the reason we do that is because the length of the end link determines where the sway bar is gonna ride. So where the sway bar rides determines what kind of stuff it could run into. And we know that it doesn't run into anything at the stock position. So that's where we're starting. Okay, so now we've gotta make a choice. Now we're gonna put it in the stiff position or the soft position. The hole closest to the bar is the stiffest setting. The further the mounting point away from the actual bar itself, the further this arm is, the softer the bar will act because the longer this arm is, the more leverage the control arm has to twist the, sw the sway bar itself. And I think I'm gonna go with soft to start out. I'm gonna go soft up front and probably in the middle position on the rear. Uh, these are adjustable end links, so the, the jam nuts, you jam them so that they are no longer adjustable, locks them in place. So if you don't tighten these up really good before you go drive, they can loosen up and then they'll basically just rattle themselves to death and then you'll need new ones. So make sure you tighten your jam nuts real nice and tight. You want to make sure when you tighten up your end links that they're not loading your sway bar in either direction. To know that, you have to have the car at ride height with the suspension loaded and everything settled. So we're going to get everything installed about 75% of the way, and by that I mean one end link fully installed and one end link dangling on the sway bar waiting to go into the bracket. Alright, so we got the car on the ground, now we're going to roll it back and forth to make sure the suspension is all settled and in its home location, wherever it wants to sit. You can also put your body weight in the driver's seat, so you're simulating what the car is actually going to be loaded like with your body in it. So I'm going to get one of the other roommates to come out and sit in the driver's seat while I do this. So I'm going to reach deep into the Miata and adjust this end link until I can get it to just kind of fall into into line with the hole in the sway bar. All right, now let's go get the rear in place and then we can let Russo get back to work <laughs> and then we'll tighten everything up. Oh my God. My head's stuck. <laughs> Let's see if it was worth it. All right, so half a day's work, a little bit of frustration, and about 500 bucks later, and we got some sway bars on the Miata. Now it's time to go test drive it and see if these things were worth it. So right away, first off, first thing you notice is how much more responsive the front end is. When we just did that slalom test, I felt like I could have done that twice as fast as I did it with the stock sway bars on. Honestly, one of my biggest complaints with the Miata in the handling department is that the front end has felt a little slow, a little bit like uh, lazy, you know? But now with these sway bars, oh my God, the weight transfers immediately as you turn the wheel and the front end just dives in wherever you want to go and we haven't even really driven yet. I can already feel how responsive it is. It's incredible. All right, so since the sway bars are gonna keep the car a lot flatter, that keeps the weight of the car a lot more centered over the car. So we don't have as much weight transfer to the outside. So we're gonna have a lot better grip. 
As soon as you turn the steering wheel, it loads up the sway bar on the outside and just immediately transfers to the inside suspension and you just feel, you feel a, a directness that was not there before. This is how the Miata should have felt from the factory. Now, sway bars are sweet because they don't affect your driving other than when you're in a performance handling situation, which is cool when you think about it. You can put gigantic sway bars on a car and just cruising straight down the street, you wouldn't know the difference. Well, I'd say we got our answer. For this car, for the amount of money that it costs, now granted, we got a little bit nicer stuff than you have to get, but you can do what we did today for about 250 bucks. So for the cost, the time it takes to install them, and how big of an impact it has, sway bars are definitely worth it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you know when videos come out, like every Wednesday morning. You get a notification, and boom, you pop over to Money Pit, and then bam, who do you find? Me, in the comments, every Wednesday morning for an hour. You can also find me on Instagram, at Zach Joke, and you can follow Donut Media, at Donut Media, across all social media. Thank you guys again, we'll see you next week.